How do you prevent a zippered body tube like this one shown here? That's what I'm going to cover in this video. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. A zippered body tube is the bane of every rocketeer's experience. Basically what happens is the shock cord in the rocket um, comes and uh, rips into the body tube like this one right here. Um, and this is called a zipper. Um, and this is a particularly nasty one. Uh, basically in order to fix this, you're gonna have to remove the whole tube and splice in a new one. Um, so how they occur is usually when the rocket opens at a very high speed. Um, what happens is as the rocket deploys the parachute at a high speed, the nose cone flips around and goes backwards because it slows down very fast compared to this, um, which has a lot of momentum and inertia to it, and it just rips down the side of the tube. Um, it can happen on the way up or on the way down. Um, and so the first thing to do to prevent it is probably the best thing, and that's running simulations of your rocket in realistic conditions. You want to have the parachute open at the slowest speed of the rocket, and that's always at apogee. Um, now, sometimes your apogee could be going horizontal. You know, you might arc and go horizontal, and so you might have a lot of forward momentum and forward speed, but that's always going to be the slowest speed of the rocket because as it starts coming back down, it's going to pick up speed again. Um, so run your simulations. That's the best advice I can, do, I can have for you. I'm, in windy conditions, you're probably going to want to use a shorter delay because your rocket is going to weathercock more into the wind. Now, other ways of preventing it, um, like on this rocket right here, uh, we have a combination of Kevlar inside the rocket and an elastic shock cord here. And what this does is, as the rocket is, uh, the nose cone comes back around, it has to stretch first before it will start cutting into the tube. Um, typically, what you want is to have the Kevlar inside the tube um, so that the elastic is over the edge like that. Um, so that's another way of doing it. Um, North Coast does something unique on their rocket. Um, this is the Phantom 4000 and it uses elastic and Kevlar, um, but they're in parallel rather than series. So they're, they both are um, attached to the bottom of the rocket down here. Um, and so what happens is the elastic is shorter, so what, it has to stretch out first. And again, it's slowing that nose cone down so that when it comes back around, it's at a slower speed so it doesn't cut into the tube as much. We like Kevlar because Kevlar is super strong. It's six times stronger than steel. And it's also very thin, so it doesn't take up a lot of room and a lot of mass in your rocket. But the downside is because it's so skinny, um, you don't have a lot of bearing surface. Um, so that's the third thing that you might do is make a, a wider shock cord. Um, and you can find a, um, a ribbon shock cord. Um, a lot of the Apogee rockets and our high power rockets, um, like the level two here, we use a, a webbing like this right here, which is a lot wider. Um, now on this particular rocket, um, it's also fiberglass, um, and fiberglass is not gonna cut very easily um, because it is so tough. Um, it's not like paper, it's not gonna cut. The downside is fiberglass is heavy. This is a heavy rocket. Um, so you don't wanna use a, you know, fiberglass if you don't have to, particularly, you know, when you're just doing small rockets, just to prevent zippers. Like I said, most of the time you can prevent them just by choosing the right delay and angling your launch rod in the correct direction 
so that it always your parachute always opens at apogee. Um, this rocket right here uses another method, um, and this is called a harness, where we have um, a single shock cord, uh, but it's it's anchored at two locations in, inside, so that um, you have instead of just one cord trying to rip it through, now you have to have two cords going through. And so this is called a harness. And then another shock cord would be attached here on this front end. Um, one of the unique things that we used to carry was uh, this device here. This was from Dino Shoots, but they're no longer in business. And basically what it did was it, you would put your shock cord through it um, and it would provide a thicker bearing surface. Like, again, it's kind of like having a thicker shock cord or a wider shock cord so that um, there's more bearing surface to that. Um, this one was made out of a, a felt cloth, it kind of fairly rigid, uh, but still flexible, but it was big and bulky. Uh, but this was a really cool idea. And so what we tried to do at Apogee is we came out with a new version um, and we're calling it the zipper shield. And this is plastic with a series of holes where you weave the shock cord through it. And I've gone ahead and put it on this rocket right here. And you can see how it, it's uh, woven, the shock cord goes through it. Um, and then it, it's wider right here, but it's still flexible enough so that um, when the shock cord is in full tension, you have a wide bearing surface right there. And that is going to give you a lot of protection, particularly, and this is really nice, particularly for smaller diameter rockets, uh, because this doesn't take up a lot of room and it's flexible and you can get it into a small tube. Um, you can use it on shock cord. Uh, this is a 300 pound. Um, our smaller kits use 100 pounds, so it can be used with either the 300 or the 100 shock, pound shock cord. Um, I tried to make this rocket zipper using the zipper shield. And this is the best that I could do. And it's, it's like maybe a half of an inch and it's just barely torn the paper. And the way I did this is I know that a shock cord, uh, when the rocket opens at a high speed, you're gonna get a zipper. So I purposely used a really long delay. I angled the rod so it wouldn't go very high. And so it would arc um, over and be coming down when it's deployed. And this one was about 20 feet off the ground when it deployed. And you can hear the, the uh, crowd in the video uh, get nervous because it was going to deploy or crash into the ground. But it, it deployed right before um, it had a chance to crash. And that was the, the extent of the zipper. And this probably opened probably close to 100 miles an hour. Uh, this is way faster than what you want to do. Uh, typically, you want to keep your rockets opening at slower velocities. You know, if you can get your opening speed down to about 35 miles an hour, that's typically pretty good. Um, higher than that, you know, you definitely probably want to go with some kind of zipper shield like this. Um, so that's uh, a number of ways to prevent zippered body tubes. Um, and if you like the zip, zipper shield, you'll find it at our website. It's Apogee Rockets, and it's apogeerockets.com is the website. Uh, my name, again, is Tim Van Milligan. You've been watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, and may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true. And no zippers. <laughs> <laughs>